Hi, everybody. Welcome to Shuko Math Practice Lab and learning through practicing. So we are still working on the unit uh, limits, continuity, and the differentiability. Today, we're going to work on the practice set number five. In this practice set, we formally introduce what is the derivative, how to find a derivative by using the definition of the derivative. That means use the limit definition about the derivative. That's how the, a lot of formula was derived. So we're going to spend the, you know, the, this practice set, we're going to work through several different types of the problems. How do you use the definition to find the derivative? So here are the five problems we're going to work on. And we're going to have a polynomial type, we have the root function, we have the exponential function, we have the fraction, the rational functions. So each one, let's take a look at what type of the technique we can use to help us to find the derivatives here. Okay, so how do I use the limit definition to find a derivative? So as usually, you know, right now is a good time to pause the video and get your pencil and the paper out and try to do some of these problems by yourself. And then, you know, we can go back here when you finish and resume the video, we can check the answers. And don't forget, if you like the practice set, you know, you can feel free to subscribe my channel and uh, also, if you have any questions or something I did not explain very clearly, you know, feel free to leave me a comment and I will try to answer your comments here. Okay, so now is a good time to pause the video and try to do the problem by yourself. And uh, I'm going to go to the whiteboard and I will talk to you later. Hi everybody, I'm back to the whiteboard. So today we're going to talk about, in this practice set, we're going to talk about how do I find a derivative by using the definition, the limits definitions to find the derivative. And it's very, very fundamental and that's the how the derivative was derived. As always, when we before we start, I like to do a brief review about what I mean by the definitions here, okay? So in typical, the way we define derivative, we have two ways to define it. So the first one, you can use this uh, notations here. So if you want to find f prime x, so you can use this one, you can say it's limit h approach to zero, and then h, this is f of x plus h and the minus f of x, okay? And then we also have another definition here. So this one's here, the first one's here, that means in, in typical, you know, you use this formula, you use this definition to find the general forms of the derivatives here. And then now, if you want to find a derivative at any specific point, let's say the f prime a, then you can use this definition. And uh, I like this definition is uh, pretty good because this one makes the things easier to calculate. So it's x minus a over, and then this is fx minus f of a. And then when the x approach to a, and then what is the derivatives here? So that's basically, are the true formulas, you know, based on the limits definition. So for this practice set, you know, all the five problems, we want to find the general form. That means I'm looking for what is the f prime x, right? And I'm not specifically at any specific value, so we are going to use the first formulas here. Okay, we have five problems, so let's go ahead and start, all right? So, so for this problem here, let's, this is the easiest one. So we say f prime x is here, right? So based on this, it will be limit h approach to zero. Let's just write it. That means f of x plus h minus f of x. You know, for these sections, uh, you know, it is not hard. And uh, 
you know, if you have a very good algebra skill, that's what is required because it requires a lot of algebra manipulation. So you just need to be careful about your algebra skill. For example, the parentheses, negative signs, then you will get it. Okay, so you will see from the problem to problem is almost the same way. Some is more tedious, some is not. Okay, so you plug it into the what you, by using the formula number one so here, right? So then this is a limit, h approach to zero. Then here, this is h. Then here, that means uh, x plus h. That means whatever the x you replace with the x plus h, right? That's what is the one of the algebra things. So this is x plus h minus f of x. Be careful about the negative sign, so put it into the parentheses so here, right? So the, um, see here, I, I kind of uh, forgot. So this is three, the x plus h minus a, then minus three x minus x, right? Okay, so this is the part, this is the part, this is the f of x plus h, okay? Now, like I said, basically it's just, test how good is your algebra skill is, right? So here this is h, and then you FOIL this, this is 3x plus 3h minus a, minus 3x minus minus is a plus, right? Remember it has to be very good, you know, very clear into your algebra. So positive, negative, right? Negative, positive, right? So here you will have a limit h approach to zero. Then this is h, three h, so here, right? So h and h cancel. So what happens here? So this is a limit h approach to zero is a constant. So the three. So I know the f prime x is equal to three, right? Okay. Now, the next one's here. The next one we're going to work about the, oh, I forgot we also the problem ask us to find the domains here. So the f of x, the domain of the f of x, this is a polynomial. So the domains here is what? Domains here is all the real number. So the f prime x also is what? It's a polynomial, so the domains here, it's also is the real number, so the domain they are equal. Okay, so the next ones here, I'm going to introduce a very special technique when we're dealing with this type of the problem. So first, let's take a look at what is the domain here, so we won't forget. Domain of f of x, we know, denominator cannot be equal to zero, and uh, inside the roots, square roots cannot be negative. So the domains here will be the zero to what? to the infinity, right? So zero is an open parenthesis here. Okay, so let's try to use the same formula again. So limit approach to zero, h, this is of x plus h minus f of x is here. Okay, so this is a limit, h approach to zero, right? So this is h. So what is the f of x plus h? So it's one over x plus h, right? then minus one over square root of x. Okay, so let's uh, simplify this a little bit. So this will be h, and this is uh, mm, x plus h. Okay, so the, let's see. Okay, so this is the x plus, let, let's, uh, okay, so let's don't do this one here. Okay, so let's leave the h there. Okay, so now in here, I want to combine it a little bit before I do that. So in here, what do we need to do? Find uh, the common denominator, right? So the common denominator, just square root of x plus h, square root of x, square root of x plus h. That's the common denominator. So this will be x, and this is x plus h, correct? Okay, now you can combine it. So this is H. So this is, I have a common denominator. This is X, X plus H. And then this is X minus X plus H. 
right? Now it's a lot easier. Now it's a lot easier. I can move this one down to the denominator. So this one will be equal to the limit h approach to zero. May I have h here? Now here, this will be square root of x, the square root of x plus h. Now here is x minus x plus h, right? So if you still remember in the, you know, in the, you know, in the limits units here, we say, how do we deal with that? Remember the one of the key technique we do is kind of like a, you multiply what? Everybody remember? So it's a multiply, we call this the conjugate, right? So this is x plus h, and this is x plus h, right? So a square root of x squared plus h. So I'm going to use the a squared minus b squared is equal to what? a minus b times a plus b. Okay, so now here, okay, so now take a look at my, my denominator going to be pretty big. So that's fine. So this is x times x plus h is roots. And then this is the square roots of x plus square roots of x plus h. Like I said, this is all is algebra. If you be careful and be patient, you will get it. Okay, so now this one is a minus b times a plus b. So will be a square minus b square. So a square minus b square will be x minus x plus h, right? So be careful about the negative signs here. Okay, so now you see here, this is a limit, h approach to zero. So this one's here, we can simplify this one, will be x minus x minus h, right? So x, x cancel. Okay, so the top here will be minus h, h, and square root of x, the square root of x plus h, and then this is the square root of x plus the square root of x plus h. Okay, now you see here, oh good, h and h cancel. And then now when you try to put the approximate h to zero, so this is zero, this is zero, right? So the limit are going to be negative one. So here will be square root of x times square root of x. Then this is square root of x plus the square root of x, right? Because h become to zero. So what do we have here? So we have here is a negative one. And then x times square root of x times square root of x is what? It's x, right? So this is x times the two square roots of x because square root of x plus square root of x. So this is negative one and the two. And if you want to come, so this is x and the square root of x. So this is x to the what? Three half, right? Or if you want, and then you can say this is negative one half, x equal to negative three half. And uh, also we say these domains here, because it's in the denominator, cannot be zero, they have a square root, so it can, has to be positive. So the domain is zero to infinity. So as you can see, it's equal, okay? So like for this problem here, like I say, every time it's about, it's the same. You just need to be very careful about your algebra. And after you practice a few, and then you will, you will get it, all right? So let's take a look at this one. This is another polynomials here. So let's first take a look at what is the domain of this polynomials here. The domains here is a polynomial, so it's a what? It's a negative infinity to the positive infinity. So it's all the real number lines here. Okay, so now let's take a look. Okay, a limit h approach to zero. So this is x f of x plus h minus f of x here. Okay, let's be, <coughs> excuse me. Let's be extremely careful about the algebra here, right? So this is h, f x plus h, right? x plus h, so everything in the x replaced with x plus h. So it's a four plus a, this is x plus h, minus five x plus h to the square. Okay, and then minus, better put a parenthesis so you will not miss up the negative signs here. 
Okay. Okay, so now, like I say, all this is in testing your algebra skills, right? Okay, so this is a four. So you foil it. So it's AX plus what? AH, right? Okay, so then you minus five. X plus X squared foil this one will be X squared plus two XH plus H squared. Then minus, break this parenthesis, minus four minus AX plus five X squared. Okay, as you see, it's pretty tedious in the algebra part. And I hope I did not make any silly mistakes here. Okay, so this is H here. So this is four plus AX plus AH minus five X squared minus 10 XH minus five H squared. Okay, so minus four minus AX plus five X squared. Okay, now let's take a look. Anything we can cancel? Oh, good. 5x squared, negative 5x squared, negative 4, positive 4, super. Negative A, positive A. Anything else? Doesn't look like. Okay, so at least we simplify it. So this is a limit, h approach to zero. Then this is h, this is 8 plus 10 of AH, right? Okay, so here, and I said, be careful. So, so this is AH minus 10 XH minus 5 H squared. Okay, so still limit H approach to zero. So this is H, okay, factor the H out. So this is A, minus 10x minus 5h, right? Okay, good job. Then hh cancel, right? So now I will have a limit h approach to zero, a minus 10x plus 5h. And uh, when h approach to zero, this turns approach to zero. So what is my answer? My answer here is uh, a minus 10x, and this is an f prime x. Good. Okay, so f prime x, uh, the domain, what is the domain here? The domains here, this is a polynomial, so it's the same thing it's from negative infinity to positive infinity, or is the all the real number line here. So the function and the derivative, they have the same domains here. Okay, so now next here, okay, let's take a look at our next problem. The next problem is kind of like, uh, it's a power function, it's kind of like exponential, no, no, this is not the exponential function. This is the, like the, like the power and with the roots and the kind of the three, three and a half powers. So how do we do this one here? So what is the techniques? Okay. So here, this is the same thing, limit h approach to zero, h f of x plus h minus f of x here. Okay, so this is limit h approach to zero, h here. Okay, so this is x plus h to the three half minus x to the three half. Okay, you say, oh boy. Hmm. So how do I simplify it? Okay, the trick here is because you have uh, square roots here, right? So we can always use the conjugate uh, theory, not a conjugate theory, conjugate concept or technique, try to simplify that out. Okay, so how do I use the conjugate technique here? So this is x to the three halves, right? Okay, so the conjugate say times, right? So I'm times. So this is x plus h to the three half. Since uh, here is a minus, so I do plus here, right? Okay, so this is x to the three half. So the same things here is x plus h to the three half 
plus x to the three halves, right? Okay, good. So now I will have a limit h approach to zero. Okay, my denominator will be h times, this is x plus h to the three half plus x to the three half, right? Then the top is still, this is, uh, you know, still this is a minus b, right? And this is a plus b. So I can come become the a square. So a square, so if a is equal to the x plus h three halves, right? So what is the a square? It will just be x plus h to the what? Cube, right? Because the square roots cancel that out. So it's a square, so it's x plus h to the cube minus b squared, so it's a minus x cubed. Okay, now, okay, continue. So we said this is equal to the limit x approach to, I'm sorry, not x, so it's h approach to zero. Okay, so the denominator here is h, and this is x plus h to the three half plus x to the three half. And then now you foil. And then here I'm going to use a formula. It's A, if you, I don't know if you remember or not from your algebra, A plus B the cube is A cube plus three A square B plus three A B square plus B cube, right? Okay, so now let's see here. So this will be X cube plus 3x square h plus 3xh square plus h cube minus x cube. All right, let's see what can we cancel. Oh, here pretty good x cube, x cube. Okay, that's it. Okay, so this is the limit h approach to zero. Now the top is have been left, you know, three terms left on the top. Each one have H, so let me factor the H out. So the first one will give you 3X squared plus 3XH plus H squared. So this is H and this is X plus H, 3 half plus X 3 half. Wow, good job here. H and H cancels, right? So H and H cancels here. Okay, so now let's see here when the h approach to zero, this is approach to zero, this is approach to zero, this approach to zero. So what is this one going to end up to be? So this is a three x square and uh, on the bottom see here, so you have x to the three half plus x to the three halves, right? So now you can do this as a three x squared, two to the x of the three halves here. The three half, you use the exponents rule. So this will be three half, what, x to the what, one half here, right? And uh, now let's take a look, we forgot to look at the domain. So f of x equal to x to the cube over three, three, three over two. So it's a cube over square roots. So because it's a square root, uh, so I know the square root has to be positive. So the domains here is zero to infinity. I use the close bracket because this is not on the denominator, x can be zero, right? So the same way is here, the f prime x, f prime x is the three half x to the one half. So the domain is the same thing, is zero to what? Zero to infinity here. It's good, okay? So remember, right? So that's what the one technique we did about two problems here. So if you see the, the square roots, then probably you need to use the conjugates, right? Concept to try to simplify it. And uh, that's the technique I want to show you. Okay, the last one is here. The last one, okay, this one also is kind of like a need you have a very good uh, you know, the algebra skill, and uh, just be careful, right? So be careful in the algebra. So this limit f prime x is equal to limit h approach to zero, 
this is uh, h. So f of x plus h minus f of x is here. And just be patient and uh, step by step, don't skip the step and you will get it. Okay, so the first one is like all the x you replace with x plus h. Okay, so this is one minus two x plus h. Then this is a three plus x plus h. All right, and uh, then here this is a minus, uh, right? One minus two x, and uh, what is here? This is three plus x. <laughs> All right. Okay, so now just like we did previously, let's try to combine to find the common denominator first on the top. After you find the common denominator, then I will be able to bring that down, all right? So the common denominator here, this is three plus x plus h times the three plus x, right? That's the common denominator. So this is a three plus x plus h, okay, times three plus x, all right? So the top will be one minus two, the x plus h times what? Times three plus x, correct? Then minus what? One minus two x, what I'm times here is three plus x plus h. Okay, you see there's a lot of algebra here, all right? And so now in here you will say this is a limit, h approach to zero. Now you can find this is a common denominator, so you'll be able to, so you just do here is big common denominator, three plus x plus h, and uh, three plus x, right? Then you just do this, this is one minus two, the x plus h, three plus x, minus one minus two x, three plus x plus h. Right, it's kind of like, uh, you just, uh, like I say, you just need to be super, super careful, right? Okay, so now, now you can move, uh, now you can move this one uh, to where, to the denominators, right? Make it a little bit easier to manipulate. So this one, this h approach to zero. Now you can say this is h, and this is a three plus x plus h, all right, times the three plus x. Okay, and then the top here, and uh, you foil the whole things, right? So you foil the whole things. Here is what I got here when I foil this. So this is, I got is three plus t minus six t minus, oh, I'm sorry, so not t here. I have the, the three plus x, minus 6x minus 2x squared, all right, minus 2x squared, minus 6h, minus 2hx, minus 3, and plus 6x, minus x, minus h plus 2x squared plus 2xh. So basically you just need to be very, very patient and be very, very careful to foil the top and uh, make sure your negative sign is correct, right? So after you foiled here, this is what we have. So let's see what we can cancel. Oh, negative three, positive three. Good job. X here, X here, okay? One negative, one positive. 
negative x here, positive x here. Okay, so far so good. 2x squares here, 2x squares here. Now I have, a, oh, here is a 2xh, negative 2xh. That's right. Hey, I simplified, it's pretty good. Uh -huh, that's amazing. So this is a limit h approach to zero. And then h, this is a three plus x plus h. And uh, three plus x. So negative six h, so it's a negative seven h. Huh. Job, h, h cancel. Now let's see when the h approach to zero, so this number becomes to zero. So what do we have here? So we have, uh, huh, very good. So it's negative seven, then this is a three plus x. Hey, simplified to pretty simple here, right? So this is my f prime x. Okay, we forgot to take a look at the domains here, right? So f of x is equal to one minus two x three plus x. We talk about, you know, in the algebra part. So, you know, if this is the rational function, the denominator cannot be zero, right? So I know the domains here is all the real number line except the negative three. So it will be negative infinity to negative three union negative three to the infinity. Okay, so f prime x is here. This is negative seven three plus x to the square. So it's the same thing. You can be anything except x equal to the negative three. So it's a negative infinity to negative three and the union negative three to the infinity is here, right? So as you can see, you know, they are the domains here, they are the same. And uh, so you probably will ask, is always the same? The answer is no. Sometimes have to take the derivative and the domain will be different. Okay, okay, sounds good. And uh, that's it. This is how do we find a derivative by using the limits definition. And uh, later, you know, when you talk about the different rules, then you don't really need to use this definition anymore. But this is a very, very fundamental, you know, the, that's how the derivatives formula was derived. So that's why we spend kind of the, this uh, video is kind of long, and we try to practice. And so make sure, you know, you do more practice, right? So remember what we always say, practicing, 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 that's what will make you getting better in the math. All right, so if you like this video, make sure, you know, you subscribe to my channel and also leave me a comment if you are still confused or you have any questions about these videos here. Okay, it's very nice to talk to you and you have a nice day and work hard, all right? Okay, talk to you in the next video, okay, bye.